So many things lurk in the deep, dark swamps of South Florida. Things both living and dead. Things of this world, and possibly of worlds, best left alone. You've heard me talk of my family's land in this forbidden area. Last weekend, I made one final trek to the swamp, and my experience there was much spookier than I could have imagined. Listen to the tale today on Homespun Hates. Hello, Hainted Loves. Welcome to Homespun Hates. I am Becky. Hey, I'm Diana. Hey, Diana. How are you doing today? <laughs> Terrible. How about you? About the same. It's been a rough day. It's been a rough week. But we're going to tell you all about it, and we're going to make it fun for you guys. Because <laughs> guess who's the guest today? Guess who's back in the house? Back in the house! Becky's back in house. It's not a decaversary, and yet it's an honorary decaversary because we have a Becky story, and you love it. Yeah, I got haunted this weekend. You did. It's a long, deep story. Lots of twists and turns, and I am going to put out a trigger warning here. If you have trouble with deep emotional stories, if you have trouble of people speaking ill of their relatives, if you have trouble with hot goss, if you have trouble with dark in strange places full of gross, creepy, crawly things, some of which may not be of this earth, then I advise you to turn this episode off right now because this is going to get deep and personal. With butt stuff. With butt stuff. Yeah. I'm going to begin by telling you of the malady that I have retrieved from my recent foray into my old homestead. Bring it on. Let's figure it out. I got a condition, which I am going to now name. I'm going to add my name to the list of maladies that we can all encounter in the swamps of South Florida, because that is where I was. And I caught something. I caught something. And can I present to you, ladies and gentlemen, pox ass. Pox ass. Pox ass. Okay, do you want to see it again, Diana? Do you want to see my pox ass? Uh, sure, why not? Let's try not to break the camera this time. Okay, because we tried to do this earlier, <laughs> and I broke the camera. This all happened once before. <laughs> Ooh, no, no, okay. That's my ass. Okay, that's, 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 that's the nice part of the ass. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, Look at man. that, that's just one side. Oh, yeah. that looks so painful. It is. <laughs> I hate that. Ugh, it's really not fun. My husband wants me to see a doctor. So for those of you that can't see us, which is everybody but Diana and me, I look like I have smallpox all over my ass. It does look a little like smallpox. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. It that's I bad. Ooh, that's bad. It looks red and very painful. Not itchy, but just ouchy. You were on the beach? Were no, you I was swimming in the, the ocean. Beach. No, were you nothing. Bitten by that tiny fun. dinoflagellates. <laughs> I wish it were that fun. No, uh, I was in my grandparents' house and I had to stand in the spider web and sort through uh, some papers. And something uh, in that spider web was not yet fully cocooned uh, as it came at me and it got all his little friends to, too. I think they're bites. I hope to God they're bites. Uh, <laughs> Chiggers or skeeters or something. Bot flies. Bot flies. <laughs> Tootsie flies. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I probably have dengue fever now with all that or Zika oh, no. or something. Oh. oh, I hope not. Oh, God. So you're standing in a spider web full of bugs that were like, it's my last meal, bitches. I'm going to go all out. <laughs> Must have been. It's all up and down my legs. There was like a rave going on on my ass. Well, that's because you were dressed like a gay country bartender. Oh, my God. Yes. With your short denim shorts and your country boots. All right. Let me back up a little bit. <laughs> I was in my grandparents' house, which is a house shaped like an octagon that my, heard of it. my grandparents built from scrap literally built from scrap it is full of secret passages and hidden alcoves and weird spiral staircases next to doors that go to nowhere and it's completely up to code <clears throat> It has no air conditioning. It has no glass in the windows. It is exposed to the elements. Did I mention this is in South Central Florida, just north oh. of the Everglades, just east of the Mayaka River State Park. Like, it's in the swamp. Yeah, remember, in your history, the actual population of the state of Florida was made possible by the invention of air conditioning. So the fact that this is a house in South Florida without air conditioning is completely moving back the whole concept of living in Florida. I was going there to go through some old photos through a bureau that I could only access by scooching around a giant oak table and I could just get around the edge of it by sticking my ass in a spider web that 
was, again, draped across a screened window. So my ass was basically hanging out in the swamp. <laughs> you were moon in the gators. I was. <laughs> but I was cute, Diana. I was wearing dark gray denim shorts. Nice. Cowboy boots. Nice. A fanny pack. You were wearing teal cowboy boots too, weren't you? Maybe. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> Up until it got dark, I was wearing heart-shaped sunglasses and I was wearing a baseball cap that said Buzz's Lighthouse and it had a fish skeleton on it. This is exactly how the freaking bartenders dress at the gay country bar in town here. <laughs> See, I was not trying to look stylish, though. I was trying to dress for the elements. Fair, except for that one element of having your back of your thighs covered. But the thing is, all the bites on my ass, backs of my thighs are fine. Oh, so they were inside your pants? They must have, got, and inside my boots, because they're all over my feet, too. Oh, yikes. Yeah, oh, it's bad. Gross. Yeah. So if you would like to know how I got pox ass and why I was down there, because the reason I was down there is actually quite sad. It's quite dark. And I experienced some quite paranormal things while I was there. Then you will definitely want to stay tuned. But first, we have a Patreon. We do? We do. That's where we talk about things like why our house is octagonal. Especially this house. And what do gators sound like at night? <laughs> By the way, they sound like dinosaurs. If you want to know what a dinosaur sounds like, go down to the swamp, hang out in the Everglades, spend the night. It's kind of illegal. You may not survive, <laughs> but you'll hear them gators. Nobody <laughs> talks about it because nobody survives to tell the tale. <laughs> I've seen videos on people's ring cams. Because mm. that's Florida. You can get a gator roaring on your <laughs> gator just cam. walks up to your front door and asks to be let in. <laughs> Hi, you're being recorded. <laughs> I didn't get that. Do you remember that story a few years back about the woman who was upset because a gator broke into her house and drank all her wine? Oh my god! There's actually photos of the gator in the kitchen with these broken wine bottles around him. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is a thing. Oh, that's amazing. Our Florida listeners, you guys know, for the rest of the world, <laughs> you're like, what the fuck? How does anybody live here? Yeah, plenty of us do. Diana and I actually lived in Florida for a while. We used to hear all sorts of things at night. Yeah, Amber always says things like, if a puddle is more than six feet wide, there's a gator in it, if it's in Florida. Sounds about yeah. right. Yeah. And there's probably also a lot of parasites you don't want to get. Oh, well, that's a given. Yeah. Maybe I've got a parasite. Any one of these things could be true. I wonder if that's what's going on in my ass. It could be parasite. parasite. Shit. I'm going to tell you oh. all about it. Okay. First, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash homespunhaints. You can get this ad free and also all this bonus content. Because as you can tell, Diana and I like to share a lot of other stuff that we can't put on the air. Even more butt stuff. Also, if you want to see things not my pox ass, because we're not going to be airing any videos of that, it's just too much for the internet. But we have other things on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash homespunhaints. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing more about your butt. And if you're not a member of our Patreon, enjoy this commercial. Oh, hi. Hello. It's Dom. And along with my co-host, Amy, we are the hosts of Horror House, True Crime, and The Macabre. If, like us, you have a morbid curiosity with true crime, the paranormal, cults, and more, then our show may just satisfy your curiosities. We release episodes on Fridays and bonus episodes every other Wednesday. You can listen to us wherever you find your podcasts and you can also find us on Instagram at horrorhouse underscore pod. So all that's left to say is until next time, my friends, stay spooky. Well, Hainted Loves, we're back here with more butt stuff. And ghost stuff. And other things. I hear that the story is spooky. So far, I'm pretty spooked out just being in the middle of nowhere with mysterious <sighs> parasites inside your butt. Well, all of this began a month ago when my grandfather passed away. On mm. March 24th, he sat in his chair and he did not wake up. About five years ago, my grandmother, who is still living, started to lose her mind. And she's got pretty heavy dementia now. Grandpa tried to take care of her, but he couldn't really. So recently she went into a nice home in Sarasota that she's being very well taken care of there. But when my grandfather passed away, I knew that I needed to go see my grandmother. And so I made the decision to take a trip down, try and retrieve 
memories, mementos, things like that, that I could out of their house, spend time with my grandmother, and then close that chapter of my life. Now, this is you going down by yourself. Yes. So let me set the scene. Of course, my husband and my parents were really scared because this is a 10 hour drive by myself through Georgia, all of Georgia, and then the entire length of Florida through places where there's no radio signal, you don't get very much cell coverage, there's nothing around. Mm -hmm. And then the place that I went, where my grandparents' house is, you can only access it by driving through a cow pasture. And we've talked about this on the show before. When I say through a cow pasture, I don't mean a road through a cow pasture. I mean, there's a break in the barbed wire fence and you drive through it and you drive <laughs> over the cattle guard through the woods. Well, you're not at the woods yet. You're at the field and there's cows looking at you, sometimes putting their little noses right up against your window. Oh, that's so wet. Yuck. Wet cow nose prints on your window and you have to honk the horn to get them to move and they don't want to move. No, they're cows. You have to drive through that over another cow guard through a gate into the woods. And once you get to the woods, you get to a structure that looks like it could fall down at any minute. Once upon a time, it was a pinnacle of mid-century modern construction. A pentacle? Pinnacle. Pinnacle. Pentacle. Pentacle. <laughs> that would explain a lot. Well, you said it was an octagon now, so I thought maybe it started out as a pentacle and evolved no, into an it's octagon. <laughs> actually, only one part of it's an octagon. It's like an octagon with a weird sloped curved hallway off of it into other odd shapes and things. Yeah, I noticed that in the photo. But you also notice it looks like it's about to fall down. Yeah. It's just wood that was never treated on the exterior. We're talking swamp. And this is also a land where, as I mentioned, this house has no central heating or cooling. You walk in the front door. The floor is made of brick because that was a building material that my grandparents could easily get access to. They built the house from scrap. The floor is brick. The septic tank is brick. When they first built their well, the pump was brick. Whoa. What? Yeah. I, I guess like just surrounding it. I mean, I'm sure the pump itself was metal, but like the, all the mechanism surrounding it and holding it in place. Huh. Okay. It's all brick. Also in the living room is a swimming pool that I dare you to get into. In the living room? In the living room. Wait, like a, an in-ground pool? An in-ground pool. Full-size pool with huh. a diving board. But you can't see the bottom because it's green. It's <laughs> like a pond. Oh, there's a spiral staircase that goes up to the attic. There is an attic. The attic is supposedly very haunted. Actually, in my entire life, I've never been in that attic. Huh. Supposedly, there's a dark room up there, too. I remember Grandma once saying that she thought she had a dark room, but she lost it. What? <laughs> Somewhere in the house. Why didn't you go in the attic, Becky? I didn't think I was allowed to. My parents never wanted me up there, and it just kind of stuck No, I mean, in like, my this mind. most recent time. After what happened to my ass... <laughs> Didn't want to look and see what was in the attic. Your exploratory nature was dampened. Yeah, actually, I was told to, because apparently there were two violins up there. Oh. I mean, uh, but I was like, no, you know what? I'm, yeah, I'm just not going out there. Yeah, yeah. Climate control is kind of important for violins. Yeah. It's also supposedly very, like, a lot more haunted up there huh. than the rest of the house. Which, you know, you'd think I should have gone up, but anyway, I'm just describing it. And then you go up two stairs, there's an urn or something under the stairs, which may or may not contain two of my great-grandparents' cremains oh my God. that you can bump into. Oh. You walk down the halls, all sorts of little secret passages, doors into other places, and you think it's a closet, but it's really leading to the laundry room, or it's leading into a staircase where there's no lights and you have to feel your way around. Oh, that's hot. This is the house. Well, unfortunately, something was different about the house when we went. I went down and I stayed with my cousin in Naples. And my grandmother stayed with us for a few days in Naples. And I slept by her side, held her hand while she slept. It's been all day with her. She has very severe dementia, but she had these strange moments of clarity. I have pajamas with little ghosts all over them. You've seen them, Diana. Of course. My little ghosty pajamas, because that's the kind of girl I am. And I was sitting out there in the hot sun with grandma, with my coffee and my electrolyte drink, because I was visiting my cousin. So there was a lot of drinking. And <laughs> I'm just like trying to recover. <laughs> and my grandmother is there and she would have these moments of clarity where she would point 
to the ghosts on my pajamas and then mention names of her relatives and then point in front of her as if she could see them. And she kept saying, look, look, look. And she pointed the ghost on my pajamas and then she'd point ahead and she'd, Grandma Kiger, Grandma Kiger, Jim, Hartford. These are all the names of people that have passed. Oh my goodness. Now specifically Grandma Kiger is somebody that I went to that house to retrieve more information about. That was my goal of this trip. Okay. Was to preserve the memory of Grandma Kiger and my current grandmother. Grandma Kiger was my grandmother's grandmother. She lived in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. She died in 1959. She was, as far as I can tell, an Appalachian granny witch. I've talked about her before on the show. She was the local healer. She was the midwife. She knew what to plant, when to plant it. She could look at the sun, the stars, the moon, the seeds inside, and tell you what the best time to do different things was. She was a combination healer, astrologer, wise woman. She was Cherokee. She lived in a log cabin. And my grandmother adored her. Nice. So I retrieved photographs. This is what I got my pox ass for. I retrieved photographs dating back to the mid-1800s of my family. I obtained a family tree that goes back to the 1700s. I obtained all these old, old things in every single letter that Grandma Kiger ever wrote to my grandmother. Wow. I was able to find all of that. So it was worth it. So when it was time to go to the house, we dropped my grandmother off first. And I started experiencing this strange nausea. Like the minute I decided to go down, I started experiencing this nausea. I actually didn't eat for about two days. I didn't know what was going on. Oh, wow. And the drive down, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then as we were going to drop off grandma, it was pretty severe. I was actually in the back seat of my cousin's car, like tapping and doing these weird breathing exercises just to keep myself from throwing up. Because she had enough things to worry about taking care of. She's a single mom. She had her dog with her. She also has my grandmother. You know, she's got a lot on her plate. I was like, she does not need to be cleaning up my vomit. Right. So I'm like trying really hard to keep it in. And then the whole time we're at the house, too, it was a lot of nausea. It was really weird. I couldn't explain what it was. I didn't eat anything. I wasn't sick. It was just this, like, you know, when your gut is telling you that something is wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it was like that. And you tend to react with nausea when you're in a haunted space. Mm hmm. I do. The closer we got to the house, the worse it got. And then I was at the house and I, I didn't want to stick around. And all of the warmth that I had always felt while I was there was gone. Everything. I have so many good memories about that place, even though it's basically this junk heap in the middle of the woods in a swamp where you can get strange maladies just from standing there. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I would always get all sorts of weird things. I know all sorts of remedies for parasites and things like old timey remedies because of staying in that house. Oh, jeez. I know how to get rid of things because you would catch them. This is gross. The, the place reeks of sulfur. You turn on any spigot and it smells like the worst shit you've ever had. Well, yeah, the, the septic tank is made out of bricks, Becky. <laughs> Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. And there's well. <laughs> the sulfur is fierce. Ugh. My cousin once found a baby. My sister once found a baby gator oh, in one of the bathtubs. You can't just say my cousin once found a baby. That's No, no. My... <laughs> oh, I mean that kind of shit has happened in my family, but we're going to we're not going to discuss that on the show today. Okay. No, but my sister did find a baby gator in the tub. We used to have lizards. <laughs> Who knows in how the many pool. are in the pool? Yeah, you can't see the bottom. Shh. But I have these associations. I have warm, fond associations with the smell of mildew because I would go in this house and I would smell mildew, but my grandma was there. And so it's like the, the smell of her perfume mixed with mildew or the smell of gardenias mixed with rat shit. Oh. It's like comforting to me. Wow. How fucked up is that? And your cousin even that was with you grew up in this house. She grew up in this house. Yes, this was the house she grew up in. This house has always been such a source of comfort for us, no matter how gross it was. We would just walk over the dead roaches and push aside the spider webs and be happy to be there. But this time, it was dark. It was so dark. There was this darkness that was palpable. 
there are these four large trees around the house that had always been favorites of grandma. And they were all different breeds, lemon tree and some kind of flowering tree. I don't remember what it was. Just these, these things. And they were old. The lemon tree was 100 years old itself. Old trees that had just thrived without needing any care. Nobody ever watered them. Nobody ever fed them. They were just there. And the soil there is so rich in all that chitin from the dead roaches, I guess, probably. just <laughs> <laughs> And the manure from the cows. I mean, they were just, they had a lot. They were just healthy trees. They were brown and dying. Oh, when we pulled up to the house and I asked my cousin what happened. And she said, yeah, when grandma's mind started to go, so did the trees. Whoa. So we got in the house and we both noticed it felt wrong. I don't know how to describe it. The minute we both got there, we wanted to leave. But we were there on a mission. We actually spent about three hours there. And all the time it's getting darker and darker outside. It's also a full moon. And a lunar eclipse. That, so, you know, maximum crazy. It is darker and darker, and a storm starts up outside. It never actually rained where we were, but it was raining farther south. But we could hear, like, the wind and the clouds moving across the sky where you could see them between the palm trees and things. We're, we're going through stuff. We're retrieving stuff. It's literally like pull out a photo, slap off the shit, roach shit, mouse shit, whatever, stuff it in a bag. Let's get through this as quickly as we can going through things. When we first went into Grandma and Grandpa's bedroom, where we started, and this is in the top octagon. <laughs> their bedroom. The upper echelon of octagons. The chair that my grandpa died in was there. I turned and looked at it and I saw him. It's just a flash. There's still a part of me that wants to believe it was my imagination. Mm. But I definitely saw a man the tufts of little white hairs that he had left and his he always wore these grease stained khaki pants and an old white t shirt or polo. He was he was not exactly a classy man <laughs> when it came the way he was dressing. <laughs> but no, I saw that there and then it was poof, it was gone. Yeah, I told my cousin and she was quite upset. She was like, Do you think he's still there? Do you think he's stuck? I was like, I don't think it was anything like that. I just think it was just an impression. And we finally got everything loaded up. We went outside, and my cousin, who grew up here, who knows every sound and smell and sight in those woods, she comes running back up the steps after loading some things into the car, and she says, did you hear that? I said, what? I, I don't know the sounds here the way you do. She said, I heard a sound I have never heard before in my life. And she was terrified, and it came from the woods came far out in the woods and I went out and I heard it too. It happened again. It was like a whoop. Woo! I wish we'd recorded it, but it terrified her. I was just like, are you sure it wasn't just a bird? She's like, no, I know every sound. And it was right at dusk and it happened about four or five times and then it just went away. That's so weird. We went back into the house and I thought, you know what? I'm going to use this ghost box because Lady Teal, <laughs> Lady Teal gifted me a ghost box. And I thought it was really appropriate because I gifted her two of the haunted dolls that grandma gave me. Oh, so it's going around full circle. So I brought out the spirit box and there's not a lot of radio stations out there. So it was like, like not much going on. So we're standing by the fireplace. I decided to go by the fireplace. I didn't even know there was a fireplace in this living room. That's how much crap is <laughs> in so this place. I was like, oh, my God, there's a fireplace. <laughs> and then I saw some urns. And I was like, yeah, I wonder if that's Baba and Ellis. Oh. So I stand there. And I'm letting the ghost box go. Ch -ch 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 and I heard a male voice go, Reagan. <gasps> Reagan is my cousin's name who was there with me. Oh, oh. Did she hear it, too? No. Damn. She came around the next minute. I didn't tell her until after we left because I thought I would freak her out. Yeah. And we're standing there and it went, ch -ch 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 and that went, Annie? Reagan's mom's name is Anne. Oh. It was like a question. Like, is that you? Something was there. Something was there because everything felt wrong. As I was leaving, we finally got everything turned off, ready to go. I had the ghost box 
back in my fanny pack. <laughs> I turned it off. I put it back in my fanny pack. And the way this this particular one is, it's a switch on the top. It's not like a button. It's a switch. I have to get my nail in there to turn it on. It's not easy to turn on. And then once it comes on, then you have to press another button to make it cycle through. It doesn't do it automatically. So I had it turned off. I had it in my fanny pack. I zipped up the fanny pack. I'm turning to go. And that damn thing came back on again by itself and started going through the stations again. Oh. And like an idiot, I immediately freaked out, opened it up and turned it off instead of listening to see what would come through. But they wanted to talk to you. I didn't want to talk to them. Something It was just all wrong. It was all wrong. We got out of that house and we felt like we were being watched. Even my cousin said, she's, what was wrong? Like, None of the warmth was there. Everything felt wrong. Everything felt dark. It felt, if I'm going to put my mind around it, like try and figure it out, it felt like that land had some sort of really dark, ancient energy attached to it. And when Grandma was there, something about her light had kept it at bay. Now, Grandma, you associate with light, but you also said she's also willing to curse a bitch. Oh, yeah. (laughs) She's feisty. So, Grandma, she represents the light and the dark, like all of us. Yeah, but she was light to me. Exactly. So, it gets even more interesting. We leave. And do you remember that story that we aired last year with the title of, you know, a ghost story must be from Florida if it involves beer disappearing at night? Why, yes, I do. That was about the same house in a way. In a way, in a way yes. Sort of. But it was also about another house in downtown historic Arcadia. When we interviewed my cousin Pat, he had been renovating this house that had been a boarding house, was over 100 years old, and he encountered all sorts of strange things. A little girl that was asking him to help her, an old man that didn't want him there, all sorts of things like that. So we have just come reeling out of this situation at the Octagon House. I am about to throw up all over myself. I've had the spirit box turn on all by itself and mention the names of two of my relatives, one of whom was standing right there. The noise that my cousin heard, the noise that we heard, we later found out it was very similar to the noise that Sasquatch makes. <gasps> and Squatch has been spotted in Mayaka, which is the park right next to us. They've actually heard really heavy footsteps in the woods at night as well. And this is and this is where Cousin Patrick heard the giggling from the woods, right? Yes. Yeah. He heard giggling in the woods. Now, so we decided we're going to go to the house that Patrick was renovating. <laughs> where he uh, encountered those things. Because why not? We're already there. We're already shaken to the core. We're already, like, not in a good place emotionally or mentally. We're like, how can we make this any worse? You can't get more haunted. Oh, wait. <laughs> I guess you can. So we go to the house. Now it's all, it's closed up. We don't have the key. We can't go inside. I do sit on the front porch for a while in an old church pew that Grandpa used to have because he collects things. So he had this old church pew and he put it on the front porch of this thing. <laughs> Which, that's not weird at all. (laughs) So I'm sitting on the church pew with the spirit box, and I'm not really getting anything. There's somebody across the street playing really, really loud mariachi music. So it's hard for me to hear. So I decide to go around to the side. And around the side, the house is completely open. An old, rusted iron gate that honestly looks like it could have come off a cemetery has been retrofitted on the side to keep people out with a big old padlock. But it's like just open into the house from there. So I'm standing at the gate and I decide to have that ghost box going again. Again, barely any signal. Reagan comes up beside me. Get anything? Not yet. Get away. Oh no. We both heard it. Just then, I'm still looking inside. I'm like, did I hear that? She's like, I heard that. And I'm like, I heard that. She's like, maybe we should take his advice. (laughs) And I'm like, no, no, maybe he'll say something else, you know. (laughs) I wouldn't go into the attic of my grandparents' house, but I'm hanging out by this old boarding house. And I look inside. Up until this point, it was completely dark inside. And then I realize I can see the furniture because it's reflecting a blue glow. What? Uh... 
I don't know where it's coming from. Like trying to look at the moonlight. Was the moon coming through? Were there cars coming through? It was a blue glow and it lit up this old chair that I could see through the gate. And it was there. It was a few seconds after this thing said, get away. It lit up and then it just slowly faded down. So if it had been something driving by or bright light, it would not have like slowly faded. Right. It did not move. It just slowly faded. Wow. What do you think that was? I don't know. Probably whatever told me to get away was trying to scare me. Do you think it might have been the old man or the little girl that your cousin heard? I think it was the old man because it was a man's voice that said, get away. Oh, that makes sense. And I was like, all right. And I said goodbye. I was like, okay, I'm leaving now. You're not allowed to follow me. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) I'm going to follow your rules. You follow mine. Don't follow me. Exactly. So came back. We spent hours going through stuff. This is before I knew I had pox ass. That showed up the next morning. Woke up the next morning, got in my car, drove home. The minute I went over the Florida Georgia border, the nausea went away. (gasps) You heard it here first. How many things can Florida cause? (laughs) It was surreal. Like, I was like, oh, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. Oh, shit. I'm fine. What the hell? Wow, that story was so insane. I love it. Okay, so we've got potentially grandpa, potentially Mm -hmm. somebody calling out to relatives, some of whom were actually present at the time. We've got a dark presence. We've got grandma seeing ghosts. We've got grandma seeing relatives and pointing at your ghosties on your pajamas. Cute little ghosties, not scary ones. That's a good thing. We've got (laughs) trees that were previously blessed, now dying. We've got a disembodied glow that told you to get out of your cousin's Mm -hmm. boarding house. Yeah. Dude. Told you. I had an interesting weekend. That was a haunted, haunted ass weekend. (laughs) Yes. Still trying to unpack it all. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. (laughs) So when are you taking me to see this octagonal house? Does anybody own it now? Is is it grandma's house, technically? No. No. Well, technically, but you told me maybe I shouldn't get into it, but I'm going to get into it. I have an uncle, may he rot in hell, that has managed to, he manipulated everything into his name. Even though it's till grandma's house, he's taken over. He's not only the executor of the estate now, but he's also the beneficiary of everything. They had a lot of property. When we went there, the place looked like it had been ransacked by a burglar. Everything of value had been stripped away. All the safes emptied. All the hidden passages opened up. (laughs) That's no fun. (laughs) The nooks, everything. Maybe it's his dark energy causing all that. You said that he had a run-in with one of the cursed trees. Yes, he did. I was so thrilled. Yeah, when we first arrived, he was there. And he had a big old bandage on his head. I was like, oh, what happened? And he's like, a tree attacked me. (laughs) And I was like, oh, no, what a shame. You be careful. (laughs) Wink, thinking all the same. (laughs) Karma's such a bitch. So a tree attacked him and like bad enough that it was like an industrial strength bandage on his head. It was not like a little like Pokemon Band-Aid. It was like some serious damage. He's a terrible person. He's completely taken everything, even though grandma's not dead. It's incredibly tacky. He also owns that house. Now he owns that boarding house that we went to. He owns everything. Wow. It wasn't supposed to be that way, but people get easily manipulated in their old age. And he worked his, I feel bad for other people that got screwed out of stuff. As for myself, I got what I knew grandma wanted me to have, which was to preserve the family memory. The photos. I don't care... I don't care about diamonds. I don't care about guns. I don't care about property or land that he got his hands on. I just care about my family history. And I am resigning myself to the fact that I will never see grandpa again. And I'll never see my grandmother again. It was just such an intense experience, everything. I guess that's what they say, go out with a bang. For me, like I said, that chapter of my life went out with a bang. Wow. What an emotional ride. Yeah. Weren't easy. (laughs) In the spirit of grandma and great grandma, are we wishing a hex upon your evil uncle? You know what? No, I'm not going to because I know that everything, the rule of three, I don't want to come back on me threefold. Mm. In this case, I'm just going to trust the universe to do the right thing. There you go. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Becky, 
Thank you for sharing that story with me. That was nuts. I'm so baffled as to why this house even exists. <laughs> right? Why anybody lived there. What's at the bottom of the pool? It's fuzzy. Who's in the fireplace? And what bit you? Whatever it was, it was hungry. Did you witness a Sasquatch party? Did somebody really want to talk to Reagan over the spirit box? So bad that they reached into your clothing to turn it back on? <laughs> I gotta say, I'm sad to never see the Octagon House, but I'm also a little relieved. I know. You know how many times you're like, when are you going to take me out there? You used to say that when we lived in Florida. I sure did. You're like, this place sounds so weird. I want to check it out. Well, I still do, but the, the wanting is dampened. <laughs> <laughs> all the parasite infections that are <laughs> rampant <Cryptids. laughs> mating calls that were witnessed <laughs> holy crap wow all told that sounds like a pretty spooky day homespun haints is hosted by becky kielimnik and diana doty and produced by homespun haints media llc Editing and music by Becky Kilimnik. Show notes by Diana Doty. If you have a ghost story and you'd like to be considered as a guest for this podcast, please visit our website at homespunhaints.com slash submit.